Hello, and welcome back to the Garments of Freedom Bible Study, trading garments of shame for freedom in Christ. Let's begin with day two of our study, putting on garments of splendor. Well, what is splendor? Magnificence and splendid appearance is what it is described as in a Google search. Grandeur, magnificence, brilliance are just some of the words that are synonyms to the word splendor. Richness, fineness, glory, beauty, and elegance. God is clothed in splendor. If you take a look at Psalm 104, verses 1 through 2, it says, Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself with light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent. And when I started studying the word splendor and what it truly means, I was literally blown away with the references to God being clothed in splendor. It's not a word that we use very often in the English language, but it's such a beautiful word that, is, that, that describes the beauty of God, the brilliance and glorious magnificence of who our God is. If you take a look at any sunset or sunrise or just the beauty all around us in creation, that is God being clothed with splendor. And not only is God clothed in splendor, but he desires to clothe us in his beauty and splendor as well. Isaiah 52 verses 1 through 2 is one of my favorite passages of all time, which is the verse based on GarmentsOfSplendor.com, and it says, Awake, awake, Zion, clothe yourself with strength. Keep that word strength in mind for something later on. Put on your garments of splendor, Jerusalem, the holy city. Now, this is Isaiah talking to the Israelites at a time in the um, Israelite history where they were exiled. They were um carried off and taken away to another country in Babylon because of their rebellion against God, because they had um, um, turned their back on him by worshiping so many different idols and not following the commands of God. Well, I'm sure they were at a point in their when they realized that they had just completely turned from God, that they had done the wrong thing and were down in the dumps and, and just really probably in a state of just deep sorrow and depression. And God is saying to awake and to clothe yourself with strength and put on your garments of splendor. The uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. Talking about the foreign countries that came in and took them away. Shake off your dust. Rise up. Sit enthroned, Jerusalem. That's another word I want you to think of for later. Free yourself from the chains on your neck daughter Zion, now a captive. So though the Israelites were captive during this time in history, they didn't have to stay that way. God wanted to free them from the chains that were on their neck, from the things that were that kept them enslaved and kept them in captivity. And there are things that we find ourselves bound to and captive to, whether that's past sin, whether that's shame from our past, whether it's um, decisions that we continue to make that are not glorifying to him. There is something that we all feel like there are times we are just in bondage to certain things. And God is calling us as well to rise up, to clothe ourselves with strength, to put on our, gu our garments of glory, of splendor, of beauty and majesty, and to free ourselves from the captivity we have found ourselves in. Now, the Proverbs 31 passage is a very familiar passage in um, Proverbs 31, verse 25, which says he is, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. This, such is, this is such a popular verse, and I never really studied the words and what each of those words mean. And a couple of years ago, I read the book Beautiful in God's Eyes by Elizabeth George, and she talks about the different aspects of the Proverbs 31 woman. And she highlighted the fact that the word dignity means splendor. If you look at the word dignity from this passage, it is hadar, and it means magnificence, ornament of splendor, beauty, comeliness, excellency, 
glorious, glory, goodly, honor, and majesty. That is what God is calling us to clothe ourselves with. So when we think of the word, the, the words from the passage, she is clothed with strength and dignity. We can also say she is clothed with strength and splendor, which just blew me away. Not only are we clothed in splendor, but we are seated in splendor. When you think of Solomon, King Solomon, and how he had such a glorious reign and was the richest, wisest king on earth, he had a huge kingdom of splendor and created such a wonderful temple for the Lord that was just ornate and beautifully decorated with gold. And if you look at 1 Kings 10, 18, there it says, then the king, Solomon, made a great throne covered with ivory and overlaid with fine gold. So remember in the passage of Isaiah 52 verse 1 where it, where God is telling the Israelites to shake off your dust, to sit up and sit enthroned. Just in, keep that mind, keep that in mind being enthroned in the beauty and splendor of Solomon's kingdom and the beauty and splendor of his throne. There is a book that is written by Heather Holloman called Seated with Christ, and it's based on the passage in Ephesians 2 verse 6, where God is raised up with, where God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Once again, we are clothed in splendor and we are seated, we are enthroned in the glory and splendor of God. And we are already seated with him spiritually in the heavenly realms with Christ. And that is just such a wonderful thing to think of. We can praise God because we don't have to live with the sin and shame of our past. We can clothe ourselves with the strength of God and we can sit enthroned. And not only are we set sitting enthroned in his splendor, we are seated at the right hand of the throne of God. We are seated with Christ right now as we speak. So our old self was in bondage to sin, clothed in shame, shackled to the past and dead to our sins. But the new self is clothed with strength. We are adorned with splendor. We are free from sin and shame. We are seated with Christ, saved by grace and alive in Christ. Praise be to God for his goodness and splendor in our lives. So that concludes today's study and reflections on um, day two. And what I want you to do is just spend some time thinking and reflecting on these questions that you can write about in your workbook, um, that you can just ha have some time with the Lord quietly and just reflect on some of these questions. How is the splendor and brilliance of Christ displayed in your life? How does knowing that you are clothed and seated in Christ affect your perspective of life's challenges? So I encourage you to spend some time in prayer, just praising and thanking God for adorning you with garments of freedom and splendor. Thank you so much. And I will see you tomorrow for day three, where we will talk about how we are clothed in garments of praise. Thank you.